still going, Rafinha! Rafinha! Oh, what a finish that is! Last week's draw makes it seven points from nine for Leeds United. Now a crunch game against Watford. This is the warm-up. Coming up for you on this week's show. I don't like anyone who goes for nutmegs. They get, they're getting smashed. Simple as that. Clicky, clicky. Joining us as always on this week's show, Leeds United legend Don Matteo. How are you doing? You alright, Rich? Very good. Good Glad to see, to see you, buddy. You got the green hoodie memo. Well, we always do, don't we? Let's <laughs> as be honest. always. We do. Uh, and also Leeds United legend Tony Dorigo here as well. Hoodie? I didn't realise it was yeah. green hoodie. Sorry, you got the green, green jumper. But, uh, yeah, okay. we need to coordinate a little bit more. Um, we've got lots to get through on this week's show. We'll uh, look back on Southampton. We'll preview Watford, of course, as well. But before we do any of that, uh, I've been loving commentary cam. Uh, this year <laughs> on LUTV. Tony, what's it like at the moment in some of the games we've had recently to be uh, up there with Bryn in the commentary areas, just uh, yeah. trying to hold it together in a professional manner? I haven't succeeded, have I, really? <laughs> it's great because you can be as, as biased as you want. That's the nice thing about it. But uh, some of the games have been crazy. So, yeah, it's been uh, eventful, to say the least. Uh, just very quickly, rank these three in order of Go best on. commentary moments for you. Okay. Uh, Stuart Dallas scoring against City, City. away. Uh, Joffe's last-minute winner against Norwich. And uh, the winner for Luke Ayling at Wolves. Which order would you rank them in for your I'm, personal enjoyment in the commentary? Uh, City, away, that has to be. That, that squeal, I've never got to the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> ever again the, the height of that pitch uh, and after that the Joffe one I think was quite incredible as well so uh, sorry Luke you're third but uh, yeah, great goal anyway they, they weren't mine it's all good <laughs> uh, let's take a look back at that Southampton game making it seven points from the last nine for uh, Leeds United uh, it's sort of a sign of recent form really Dom that we went into that game expecting fireworks at one all expecting well we're just going to get a last minute winner here aren't we but it didn't quite work out that way no uh, listen they're a decent side aren't they Southampton well organised we knew at that point they weren't playing particularly well at that moment they'd lost in in the cup and obviously lost three league games so it was maybe a good time for us to pay him, but we didn't really take advantage of that and we know that with the quality and we've seen from Ward Prowse his delivery and the goal he scored is, is brilliant he's one of the top in it that and I think he's getting compared with Beckham's kind of stats at the minute so yeah they're a dif dif difficult side to play against and uh, yeah it was a decent point in the end I think we would have taken a point yeah. I think seven points out of the last three games we in my opinion, that was really good. <laughs> it was really good points. And I think because the, the, the importance of them wins was just massive, wasn't it? It didn't matter how we got them results, but I think seven was massive and we got it and uh, now it's about moving forward. Uh, if you would have given Ward Prowse the opportunity to pick up the <laughs> football and put it anywhere on the pitch he wanted to, he would have placed it within a few inches of that exact spot. It was yeah. kind of a nervousness in the ground as soon as he stepped up. Like, it's almost like he has having a penalty or something. The control he's got, yeah. uh, the ability he's got to put it on a sixpence, hasn't he? Whether it's from a, a free kick wide or a, a corner kick, and you're right, as soon as he put it down there, you think, well, you, you can survive a couple of times, but can you survive again? And we couldn't. It was a great free kick, yeah. Uh, we had opportunities in the game, of course. Looking at the goal, you know, Jack Harrison getting on the end of that. Rafinha did phenomenally well, and really sparky during that game as well, link up with Rodrigo. So there is certainly a lot of attacking intent. It certainly is, and Rafinha, you know, he's looking better and better. Rodrigo's getting into that gap now, where yeah. I think his best position is that linking the play to the strikers in the midfield, and he got on the ball, made things happen, and uh, we looked really good going forward, yeah. Yeah, Jesse Marsh said he wasn't, uh, I think his words were, wasn't overly satisfied with the performance. So, Don, what, what would you say were the positives, and what would you say the things that they'll be working on going into this weekend? There's always something to work on in a football club. Um, I think, I think let's take the positive from, from from my point of view is that we didn't get beat again it was another good point um, as we mentioned a well drilled Southampton team so I think the, the thing they'll be looking to can we score more goals can we get more chances I don't think we've been creating enough chances for me personally um, and I think if we do create more chances we will obviously score more goals but I think it's, it's the right balance isn't it I don't think we're going too gung-ho 
And again, but he's, at the moment, sometimes we, I've thought we've been easy to play against at times. At the moment, I think there's a little bit more resistance with us now. And I think Coop's coming back has been integral to that as well. Just the voice sometimes, and he's the captain, um, and obviously other players playing as well. I think, I think, but I think for me, Coop's has been a, a massive plus to come back and play so well. And obviously, he got man of the match, Tony, didn't he? Yeah. So I think that was great for him to come back and come back with a bit. Of, he, I think he knew what it meant, that result, even though it wasn't a win, it wasn't the three points, it was just important that we got a point in that game because obviously looking into the next game, it's obviously massive. Yeah, uh, Liam Cooper, you, you mentioned there, of course, coming back with that sort of performance. Uh, he's had more managers and head coaches at Leeds United than you'd probably wish to, Ten. to list. Ten. Ten. There you go. There you go, Ten, yeah. Which is an extraordinary stat in itself, but it also shows the level of confidence that each individual man manager has had in him. It shows his qualities, doesn't it? That Jesse Marsh, as soon as he's fit and available, straight in that team. Yeah, and I think what's interesting, uh, something from fans that probably don't quite see the inside of how teams work. It's the effect that he has on others as well when he plays. So it's not only him and his performances, it's how he then can organise the defence. And uh, I thought he was superb, considering he hasn't played since December. Yeah. Yeah. To come back and play like that was really impressive. Calvin Phillips, of course, back on the pitch. As soon as Calvin Phillips <laughs> steps onto the pitch, everyone in the, the crowd just seems to go, ah, that's... Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's what, we're, that's what we're looking for, isn't it? His quality on the ball, it's just evident so immediately as soon as he's on there, Dom. Yeah, you, you're spot on. Listen, he's a top player. You know, he's played at the highest level now. He's, you know, he's mm -hmm. player of the year for his country as well. So he's, he's, he's so important. But I just love the way he can slow things down, you know, when, at the right time and keep, picks a pass. And he, he does the right things very easily, uh, the, the easy things well. If you know what I'm saying? He's like very good at the basics, as I always talk about the basics. He's very good at them, but he's also got a pass as well. But I think he felt himself into, the, felt his way into the game as well, because obviously coming off the bench is, is never easy. But I think there's so much more to come from him, and hopefully we can see a lot more of him before the end of the season. Uh, Tony, where do you assess that we're at at the moment, five games into Jesse being in charge now? Because in some ways, you can look at it as seven points from uh, the last nine, seven points from 15, if you want to look at it that way. But the games have been so different. And it's, you can't compare one with the other that in terms of style, how they've gone. Where do you assess Leeds are at coming into this run-in? I think for Jesse, it's, it's quite difficult because it's all about results now. You know, it's not actually how we play. It's making sure we get those points to stay in the Premier League. I thought the first game against Leicester, I was amazed how different we played yeah. and how well we played. I thought, wow, yeah. within two or three days, they picked all of this up. Yeah. That soon got undone against Villa, didn't it, unfortunately? So it's going to take a little while. But what you are seeing is great spirit, uh, clearly you know, very well organised, uh, and they're, again, believing in what they're doing. We don't look so open, no. uh, and we look like you know, we can create chances. Got to take those chances, that's yeah. the only thing. But uh, yeah, we're going in the right direction and everyone's buying into it. Uh, we will, of course, be looking ahead to this uh, weekend's match. Huge match as well for Leeds United, just away from the first team. Uh, very briefly, Dom, under 23s, uh, really great performance here at Ellen Road, 4 0. Ben Parker doing his best, Tony DeRigo's, <laughs> with his reactions on co commentary as well, especially for Somerville's uh, one, one of his goals as well. I mean, that was a heck Belter. of a hat trick and a heck of a performance. Yeah, Belter, and uh, yeah, obviously more to come from him, and hopefully we see more of him. He's obviously uh, got lots of talent. He's, what, what I liked about him as well, he looked quite aggressive on the ball. When he got it, he was trying to make things happen. And I love that because he's obviously got a bit of pace. He's got a bit of creativity, but bringing goals now as well. That's the one thing I think, you know, you notice that straight away, hat trick. Tell you what, so Jesse Marsh, we're looking at thinking, I tell you what, he's done well. Let's have another look at him properly because it, chance, he, he's the kind of player who could impact a game and make things happen for us as well. So hopefully he'll be knocking on the manager's door soon because that's what you've got to do if you want to get in that first team. Uh, and away from the uh, the football on the pitch, of course, Leeds United uh, remembering Christopher Loftus and Kevin Spate this yeah. week as well, 22 years on since their uh, tragic deaths over in, in Istanbul. Uh, really important for the club to do that. You saw all the players together and um, making sure that we remember something that should never have happened. No, it, it, you know, it's absolutely vital uh, from the club's point of view and everyone's point of view that we, we remember you know, that situation um, and we, we make sure 
that every single year you know, it's commemorated in the right way and it's important for the club and for the fans and the players to all be part of that. OK, you can see some of those tributes uh, on LUTV uh, just via the app. Uh, this week in the Premier League, there's loads of big games, mm. as we know. They're coming thick and fast for all the teams around us as well, uh, with Everton taking on Man U, Everton losing midweek, of course, at Turf Moor. That's a lunchtime game, so that'll take place before us. Norwich playing Burnley down there uh, as well. But the big one, uh, you know, I guess, is at the other end. It's at the business end where you, you really want to be uh, in the Premier League. Manchester City against Liverpool. Um, Dom, let me come to you first. This title race <laughs> oh, is... Oh, surprise me. Here we go. It's, it's wide open. Dom, which way is it going to go, would you say? Well, you know, you know which way it's going to go. <laughs> now, nah, listen, two great sides, two yeah. great managers, yeah. two teams who know what they're doing. I think it'd be a tight game. Um, they always, well, they usually are. <laughs> Who knows? But you know, this is crazy the Premier League. But I just think it will be a tight game. It's so much at stake, massive game. Obviously, Liverpool have had the luxury of resting a little bit, even in the Champions League, you know, in the quarterfinals. And then I'm sure City will have done that as well because obviously Foden come off the bench and impacted. So, yeah, it's going to be an amazing game. Let's hope it lives up to, you know, what, what it should be. It's going to be, I think, two teams who know how to win football matches, but also I think Liverpool ed just edge it, in my opinion, defensively a little bit stronger. And um, obviously they can, they've got an abundance of talent, Liverpool, at the moment. I know City have as well, but look at the, the strikers they can call upon at any time. It's just, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Tony, who's going to win that game? <sighs> I'd better go the other side of the fence, hadn't I? <laughs> Man City, i better go for. I, I think uh, Dom's right, the players, the individuals on both sides can change that game. And they have so many of them. It's not just one or two. It's so many of them. So anything could happen. Hopefully a piece of brilliance you know, wins the game, but it's going to be a, a great match. Poor Dom giving you the, uh, the shake of the, the head. Eyes, you know, I saw that. You know, I'll tell you what, you saw that out. And in the meantime, let's hear from Leeds United head coach. Here's the thoughts of Jesse Marsh. Yeah, I mean, I think Watford is a really uh, disciplined defensive group that uh, they don't want to give much away. They, they stay pretty organized. They stay very compact, sometimes defending deep. Uh, but are incredibly aggressive and often lethal in, in transition moments. Uh, they have the second most uh, chances in shots in transition in counter phases in, in, in matches in the league, and it's because they really tried to play to that strength. So we have to be very aware that often Watford is most dangerous when we have the ball, and we have to make sure that we're balanced in, in, in how compact we are in our rest defense phases and our counter pressing phases to make sure that we don't uh, allow their attacking players to be in open spaces and, and running at our defensive group. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a little bit tricky uh, preparing for them because they rotate a lot of players. They, they have a, a talented group, a lot of good 1v1 players. Um, and so, I, I, you know, every time I prepare for, for a match in this league, it's hard to find weaknesses in, in, the, in the ways that teams do things. I know that Watford's a team that's low on the table and fighting relegation, but, but I still think that Roy Hodgson's done a good job with them, that they're, they're, they're disciplined and organized, and it will not be an easy match for us. So Leeds United going to this week's match with a chance to do the double over Watford. I've probably spoken too soon there. Um, they'll be going into this confidently, though, won't they, Tony? Because on the back of the results, is it as a player when you can see points coming as a result of the work that you're doing? Is that what makes the confidence grow? Uh, yes, all about results. You know, uh, winning games, getting points. Uh, suddenly, you then have belief in what you're doing, and there's no doubt that the boys have, you know, have certainly got that. When they came off after Southampton, they were disappointed. So, that, so that's a good sign. Uh, and Watford's another opportunity now to beat a team that are down below us and really put that gap, uh, you know, even bigger. But Watford will be thinking exactly the opposite. What a great chance it is for them. So, no, I'm sure the boys are going in there with a lot of confidence. Yeah, and Dom, in terms of the gap between Leeds and Watford, it's eight points, they have a game in hand, but they are with the opportunity to play, including us, the teams that are around them. So Watford will presumably approach this as a must win. Is it must win for Leeds as well? No, no, don't think it is, no, but obviously we'd like to. But you know, I think for Watford, it's massively, they, they do, they, they'll be going for it. They've got to go for it. Let's be honest, you just talked about the points there. They have to go for this and um, they'll see it as a game that they can win. And we have seen in patches, they can be a good side. They're kind of unbelievable or, or not very good. That's the way they've played. They've got no consistency whatsoever. But when it, when it comes to a game like this and it's so important, the pressure is who manages the pressure better in these kind of games and uh, hopefully that'll be Leeds, not Watford, but they'll be up for it. 
There's one thing that would definitely be up for it. It's because it's a massive game for both clubs. Yeah, when we beat them at Ellen Road, I think we all left here thinking, wow, Watford looked like they're yeah, in big trouble. trouble. They, they, let's be fair, they weren't very good at all on the day. They looked like the poorest team in the league. They've changed managers, of course. Watford tend to do that fairly regularly. How have you assessed where they're at? Do you think they've got a, a fighting chance here? They've got a fighting chance because they have got the offensive weapons that could, could harm us. Um, but I think... You've got to do it consistently over the course of a season. Uh, you're right, when they came here, I thought it was the worst team that had come to Ellen Road. Not that they couldn't play well, just no. their attitude was yeah. just as a group. It just wasn't there, was it? Now, obviously, that's back. They're looking better. Um, but I still think, you know, can they, when the pressure is on, as Dom said, that's important. You need to stand up now. These are the time you need the big players to come and perform. Can they do it? Uh, we'll find out, but uh, I'm not so sure. Uh, Dom, Leeds players will go into this knowing that actually three points down at Watford and really, you know, you're very close to doing the job you're set out to be doing over the last few weeks. How do they approach this game? Uh, is it a case of biding your time or is it a Leeds United on the front foot and try and put this game to bed as quickly as you can? Well, I think patience is always something I've always talked about in football. At times, we, we aren't that patient. We keep, we keep going and going and playing one way. But under Jesse March, I've seen a different approach. So hopefully, we just go very... We, we try and obviously win the game, but don't take any risks. We, we, we have taken so many risks playing under you know, Marcelo Bielsa. Bielsa was great to watch, and great to, but I think sometimes we did take too many risks. And I think under Jesse March, especially in these next, at the end of season games now, this is where now it's about just winning them games, getting results, and obviously Coop's back, at, you know, back as the skipper, leading from the front, talking, organised. The organisation now for me for these next few games to get the season finished is massive. Whoever organises it the best usually stays up, and I think with with Coop's back, I think it just gives us a bit more of a chance defensively. How do the players keep focused on what they're doing and not get distracted by the things going on? I mean, from a fan's point of view, you know. Burnley playing Everton the other night, you know, it's going one way or the other and you're watching it, what result do we want? Do we want a draw? Do we want one of the teams to win? As players or as management of those players, how do you keep them focused away from all that other noise just on this is the game we're playing, this is what we're supposed to be doing? Because it's easy to say, but is it hard to do? It is. Is it hard to do? I've hmm. never felt it. I never felt it that hard to do in that you switch on and you, know, you can only control what's right in front of you yeah. and do it to your best ability. And that's it. Of course, when you're home and you're looking through the TV results, you're yeah. going to think, oh, OK, they've lost, they won. That's natural. But as soon as I got to the training ground, that's it. I switch on, I do my job. Uh, so I think the boys will be absolutely fine. They'll forget all of that, go out there and do a job. Uh, and that is the difference between the professionals, you see, and uh, <laughs> us mere, mere fans over here. Little side battle, uh, top nutmegs of the year so far in the Premier League this season. Uh, second place is Rafinha with 14. First <laughs> place, Emmanuel Dennis with 17. So just a little Ooh, side one to, to, okay. to note there. So you see Rafinha going for an extra few nutmegs, but, you know, two players who have skill in abundance. I don't like anyone who goes for nutmegs. They get, <laughs> they're getting smashed. Simple as that. <laughs> don't be trying to nutmeg me, because you're getting it. Simple as that. We should have one about the flop as well. I think Luke yeah, Ayling, there was one the on flop. Saturday yeah, again yeah. where Luke did rather well and got a free kick. He, so, did. Uh, yeah, he, he, he well. also came back from me, looked like he'd been knocked out. And he got <laughs> up straight away. Yeah, yeah. That was brilliant. That was so brilliant. Uh, with a big smile on his face, but there you go, you always get that with Bill. Uh, okay, we'll get your match predictions in, in just a moment. Uh, before we do that, uh, three of our players, Rodrigo, Rafinha and Mateus Click took on the Box to Box Challenge. And here's what happened. Okay, okay, let's start. Ready? <laughs> Woo! Oh, the dead control. Wow, my friend, very good. Very conditioning, Rafa, well done. We're gonna be nice in Rio. <laughs> oh, clicky. Yeah. Finish the work. Let's go, Clicky. What assist, brother. Whoa! Spoiler! Boiler. 
Pot var. So all that's left to do is get the score predictions for this huge match this weekend for Leeds United. Um, Dom, I'm going to give you a moment to think about yours. I'm not taking a 2-1 this week because it's too predictable and you always go for it. So you need to think of something else. In the meantime... Oh, hold on a sec. I'm just going to go for 2-1. <laughs> there's, there's been too many 2-1s okay, okay, this that, season. Right. Um, what are you thinking? 2-1. Uh, 3-1. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. We're going to score another goal. There's one of these days, the chances that we get, we're going to convert a few more of them. So this is the day. Mark my words, Rich. This is the day. 3-1. Uh, you've been backed into a corner here where yeah. all the, all the <laughs> possible Dom predictions you wanted to take uh, yeah. uh, are pretty much gone there, Don. What are you, what are you thinking? Listen, we'll take any win, a million percent. So, but I'm going to stick to my guns here because I've got to get it right sooner or later. I'm going to go 2-1. 2-1, two one. One. Two one. One. yeah. <laughs> Did not, just didn't see that coming. Totally. Really? Totally didn't see that coming. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Dom, Tony, thank you. Tony, you're welcome back anytime. They only bring out the comfy couches when, uh, when Tony's guests of your calibre. Yeah. And they turn Correct. the heat on. Which That's is nice. the one. <laughs> so they are welcome back anytime. Uh, Leeds United travelling to Watford. Huge game in the Premier League. All the action, of course, on LUTV. With your commentary team, Bryn Law and... Tony DeRiga, enjoy the match.